Well, hello, 4C. Um, welcome to Evaluating Integer Exponents. Our goal today, I can evaluate integer exponents with and without a calculator. So we're going to first take a re, give you a little reminder of what an exponent actually means. Okay, so we know exponents mostly as repeated multiplication. When I write it this way, this tells me that the number 3 is multiplied by itself five times. So I have five threes and they're all multiplied together. I'm going to use the dot to represent multiplication. But when we're talking about integer exponents, we're talking about negative exponents as well as positive exponents. And we have to figure out what does a negative exponent mean? If I have 3 to the negative 5, what does that mean? How can I have negative 5 threes? You can't have negative number of something. So we have to figure out a different way um, to think about exponents because a repeated multiplication doesn't make sense anymore. So we're going to take a look at a pattern here. So we're going to see if we can figure out what zero and negative exponents mean. Um, so we're going to start just by evaluating some exponents here. So 2 to the exponent 3 is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. And 2 to the exponent 2 is 2 times 2, which is 4. And 2 to the exponent 1 just means I have 1, 2, so that's just a 2. But 2 to the exponent 0 means I have 0 twos, which might make you think that 2 to the exponent 0 would be 0 if I have 0 twos. But it's actually not, and we're going to see what it is by following this pattern backwards. So how do I get from 8 to 4? And it has to be the same rule as going from 4 to 2. Some people will tell me to get from 8 to 4, I have to subtract 4. But if I subtract 4 again, that's going to take me to 0, not to 2. So I have to have the same rule from one number to the other. So hopefully you can see that since it was repeated multiplication going forward, this is 2, and then this is 2 times 2, and then this is 2 times 2 times 2, that when I go backwards, it's the opposite operation. So what I'm doing is dividing by 2 every time. So that means to get from here to here, I'll also have to divide by 2. And 2 divided by 2 is 1. So let's keep going. I have to divide by 2 again. 1 divided by 2 is going to be 1 over 2. And if I divide by 2 again, divide by 2, what happens when I split a half and half? I get a quarter. And when I divide by 2 again, splitting a quarter in half is 1 eighth. And so take a little look at this. This is related to this. Up here I have an 8, and down here I have a 1 over 8. And up here I have a 4, and down here I have a 1 over 4. And up here I have a 2, and down here I have a 1 over 2. So it's kind of looking like when I have the opposite uh, number, when I have a negative 3 instead of a positive 3, now my 8 becomes a denominator instead of a numerator. And that's actually true. That's what's happening. This negative means that I have to flip it over. So this 8 up here used to be 8 over 1 when I had 2 to the exponent 3. And then when I have 2 to the exponent negative 3, it's 1 over 8. So that negative exponent actually means we're going to flip things over. We have the reciprocal of what we were working with. Um, or another way to look at it is that when we're following that pattern backward, we have repeated division. So when we go back into the negatives, we're repeatedly dividing by the same number, which is why it's on the bottom, because we're dividing all those times. Let's make sure it works for 3 as well. So 3 times 3 times 3 is 27, and 3 times 3 is 9, and three, oh, 1, 3 is 3. And so here we have it again. We're dividing by 3 every time. Divide by 3, divide by 3. And so then the next time when I divide by 3, I'm going to get 3 divided by 3 is 1. 
So take a look at that. I'm just going to take the highlighter here. This is kind of interesting. It didn't matter what the base was here. When I had an exponent of 0, I got a 1. And the reason for that is because I divided the base by itself. When I go from 2 to the 1 to 2 to the 0, it's a division by the base itself of the base. So anything to the exponent 0 means that I've divided something by itself. So Uh, and if we keep going here, oops, if we keep going, we're going to have 1 divided by 3 is 1 third. And then 1 third divided by 3 is 1 ninth. And 1 ninth divided by 3 is 1 27th. So the general rule is whatever my base is, if I have it to a negative exponent, I'm going to get the same number as if it was to the positive exponent, it's just now it's flipped over. It's on the bottom, not the top anymore. Now, an exponent of 0 means the base is divided by itself, or whatever we're looking at has been divided by itself. Uh, so that means that anything, it doesn't matter what it is, when you divide something by itself, you always get 1. There's always 1 of something in itself. And a negative exponent, negative exponents mean repeated division. Repeated division. Uh, and the general rule, as I gave you up there, that's going to be n to the r is the same thing as 1 over n, or n to the negative r is the same thing as 1 over n to the positive r. Okay. So we're going to summarize this on the next page. So in summary, a to the n means a times a times a times dot 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 times a n times. And a to the exponent 0 actually means a divided by a, which is just 1. And it doesn't matter what your a is. If you put it to the exponent 0, you're dividing by itself. So your answer is always going to be 1. And a to the negative n means 1 over a times a times a dot 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 times a n times. which means 1 over a to the n. Okay, so we're going to take a look at a few examples. It says without using a calculator. So without using a calculator, negative 5 to the exponent 3 means negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5. Now, three negatives, a negative times a negative is a positive, then times another negative means my answer is going to be negative. And then I just do 5 times 5 is 25. And then times another 5 is 125. 2 to the exponent 3 means that I have 1 over 2 to the positive 3, which is 1 over 2 times 2 times 2, or 1 eighth. Now, if you type this into the calculator, the calculator is likely going to give you a decimal answer. If you give me something other, other than a fraction, uh, I'll know that you probably typed it into the calculator, and this was supposed to be without using a calculator. Now, this last one has a fraction as your base. This is a little different than the couple of examples that we did on the previous page. If you have a fraction as your base, the first thing you have to do is flip that fraction over. So this negative exponent, because we talked about it meaning flipped over or reciprocal, this is going to be the same as 3 over 4 to the positive 2. And 3 over 4 to the positive 2 is the same thing as 3 over 4 times 3 over 4. Now, if you remember way back when you took fractions in grade 9, uh, when you multiply fractions, you multiply the tops and you multiply the bottoms. An Another way you can think about it is that that exponent belongs to both the top and the bottom. 
So you get 3 squared over 4 squared, and of course 3 squared is 9, and 4 squared is 16. Okay, now we're going to use our calculator to evaluate, and what you're going to need to do is look on your calculator for some buttons. So we're going to put in 2.56 for the base, and you need to look for the exponent button on your calculator. Now the exponent button is going to look something like this. It might just be a little up arrow, or it could be a button that says A to the B, or it could be a button that says X to the Y, or some of the newer calculators have a button that has a little box to another little box. So you're gonna look for that button, and you're going to type in 2.56, hit that exponent button, and put in the exponent. So on this calculator, it's an x to the y. So we're going to put in 2.56 to the exponent 4, and hit equals, and we get 41.6. Now for this one, it's a negative base, so you want to make sure you put in brackets for this on your calculator. So look for the brackets on your calculator. We'll pull up the calculator again, give it a clear, bracket, negative, oh, let's pull it over and figure out what our base is, negative 1.03, hit the end bracket, and then to the exponent, 5. So we get negative 1.2 approximately. Oh, and I just realized it said we were supposed to round to the nearest hundredth, but we're actually rounding to the nearest tenth. And since we're rounding, put that little dot above the equal sign. Now for this one, we have to remember our order of operations. We have to do the exponent first before we multiply by that 53. So we're going to put in our calculator 0.56 to the exponent 3, get our answer, and then once we have our answer, we're going to multiply by the 53 out front. So times 53. And so our answer is 9.3 approximately. Now don't forget your order of operations. We've got bedmas. We have to do the exponents before we do addition and subtraction or before we do division and multiplication. Um, so remember that the exponents go in first. So now we have some questions here. It says only use a calculator when the base is a decimal. So that's this one, or this one, or this one, or this one, or this one. All of the rest of them you can do without a calculator. So they should look like this. 4 to the negative 2 is 1 over 4 to the positive 2. And you know what 4 to the positive 2 is. That's just 4 times 4. So it's going to be 1 over 16. So they should all look like that. Your answer should be a fraction. If it's a decimal, I know you've used the calculator. Good luck.